is section three of key area one. It's the last section and it's called cancer cells. You should have already watched the previous two sections um, on this key area. So all of it and this will be the last section. It's a nice wee short one just on cancer. Okay, so something to point out beforehand is oncology is a byword for cancer. You might have been into a hospital before and you've seen things like an oncologist, that is a cancer doctor. Oncology centres, that's talking about a cancer centre. And if you look under, you can see some familiar names like Macmillan is known to be in cancer care quite a lot. Radiotherapy, that is a kind of cancer treatment. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. It's a very big thing that happens to humans. It also happens to animals as well. And we're going to go through the mechanisms of kind of how it works. Okay, so National 5 Review um, wasn't touched on too much in National 5. It was touched on a bit in National 4 as well, actually, if you went through that pathway. But cancer is caused by a mutation in DNA. So something that has caused your DNA not to be right, whether that is just one base out of place or many bases out of place or anything that kind of causes a mutation to your DNA can cause cancer. Uh, in National 5, you talked about mutagenic factors so or mutagenic agents, so things that cause mutations to your DNA. For example, carcinogens, so things that can become uh, cancerous, like nicotine in your smoke. You've got UV light, so sun. the sun right now is a very, very bad one. You should have your factor 50 on if you're anything like me. That is a really bad mutagenic agent. Uh, and x-rays and gamma rays and lots of other things, but basically anything that causes uh, this kind of mutation in your DNA can cause cancer and cancer is just simply uncontrolled cell division so when cell division just keeps going okay so in terms of what you need to know so uh, if a cell makes a mistake during DNA replication so if, or if it's going through mitosis uh, generally the cell can't repair itself or if it's badly mutated it can't necessarily function the way it has to do it and when that happens, the immune system normally helps to destroy it. So if you have a problem in your body, your immune system is the go-to thing to say, that's not right, we need to destroy that. The issue with cancer is that cancer is caused by a special type of mutated cell with a particular mutated gene that basically means the immune system can't detect it. It basically seems so normal that your body can't tell that there is an issue with it, so your body doesn't destroy it. Uh, and that's the big issue with cancer is that your body can't detect it, which means it can grow and live and act like a normal cell, but cause all the damage that we know cancer cells can. OK, now the main features of cancer cells are they reproduce constantly. Now, most cells can reproduce during mitosis, but the idea is they have on phases and they have off phases. So they say, I'm being a pancreas cell right now. I'm going to make some insulin. I'm going to make some glucagon, whatever my job is. OK, um, and then say, OK, I'm going to pause that. I'm going to divide and then I'm going to start my job again. Cancer cells are just divide, 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 which means they're not doing the job that they're supposed to be doing at the time. Uh, and this can cause problem in organs like the pancreas, the brain, the liver. In addition, they don't die easily. Quite a lot of cancer cells have mutated to the extent that they don't actually respond to normal go and kill yourself signals from the immune system. Weirdly, the immune system does have those signals. It'll trot up to cells all the time and go, I don't like you, kill yourself. It's like the horrible bullies of the body, but it's a necessary function. Cancer cells, however, ignore them, ignore those signals and they just keep going and going. As well as that, normal tissues stick to each other. So say I've got my lovely bicep here, I've been doing Joe Wicks every day, building in my bicep. The muscle stays there. I don't end up with a bicep in my chin or my nose. The cells stay where they're supposed to be. Cancer cells don't do that. They don't stick to each other well, and as a result, they can break off and flow through the bloodstream, and that will cause problems, which we'll talk about later. Now, this video here, uh, Cancer the Selfish Gene, it looks at some of the mechanisms of cancer and how it works. Uh, this video as well, if you click on it, it's just a YouTube video, a little bit more explanation on the mechanisms of cancer. Okay, so here again, really, really important definition, one you have to know word for word, like all the important definitions that we give you. Cancer cells are cells that have stopped responding to regulatory signals that control cell division. So basically, the signals that usually tell your body cells to, yep, go ahead, start dividing, or nah, stop, we don't need any more of you right now, cancer cells don't respond to them. It's basically like they're constantly running a red light whenever there is one. They just keep going because they are not responding to regulatory signals that control the cell division. Really important that you get that definition down. That's a flashcard definition there. 
Okay, so as cancer cells continue to grow, multiply, 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 they form something called a tumour. So that's an important word. You need to know what a tumour is. As the tumour grows, it interferes with the function of the organ that it's growing in, and that stops the organ being able to work. And then that is what causes symptoms. Nobody who has cancer cells, like four cancer cells in their body, knows they have them. OK, uh, by the time people actually have cancer that they can actually detect, it's because an organ has gone really pretty wrong. Um, so, for example, like the pancreas, keep going to this one because pancreatic cancer is quite a big, a big thing, um, is that what will happen is the pancreas cells will start growing and growing. People will find that they start losing weight and they lose weight because they're not producing the digestive enzymes that the pancreas normally produces. And then they'll start getting symptoms like maybe uh, jaundice, yellowing of the skin. And that's when they go to the doctor. Now, by that time, there's already a pretty big tumour inside the pancreas, which can make the prognosis usually pretty severe. Um, but the point is cancer doesn't show symptoms until it stops an organ working. And that's because it's made of these cells that are not doing their proper job and they're stopping all the other cells from doing their proper job too. So another important idea that you have to know about is the idea of a secondary tumour. So this is a tumour that basically arises from the original tumour tumor due to the fact that these cells don't stick to where they need to be. So you can see in this diagram here, there's a tumour that's formed and then there are certain cancerous cells that are actually breaking off of it into the bloodstream. Now, because tumour cells don't stay where they need to be, these cells can break off, they can go in the bloodstream and they can go and they can land at another site. So, for example, if you have a tumour in your lungs, it might be that some of those cancer cells break off and then travel to your liver. And when they land in your liver, they're going to start to form a secondary tumour there. It's the second tumour that's forming and it's arising in a new location. So it is a secondary tumour. And that's what quite often happens. You hear a lot of people who have come in and they've found they've got lung cancer and then suddenly they have skin cancer or liver cancer as well. And that is because tumours have a really, really bad habit of having the cancer cells break off, travel in the bloodstream and then start forming new tumours somewhere else. And that is the really, really bad aspect of cancer. And everything about cancer is perfectly designed to kill you. It hides from your immune system. It can travel through your blood. If one cancer cell survives, it has the potential to keep going and keep going and keep giving you cancer over and over again. Now, chemotherapy is a common cancer treatment and it targets rapidly dividing cells. It's given in the intravenous drip, so an IV drip, into your blood. And the aim is these chemicals go travel through your blood, killing any cancer cells that might be in there. And this is why surgery and chemotherapy are used together. It's not enough just to have surgery. So say you have liver cancer and the surgeon goes, dives in there, lops out the tumour and is like, well, we're probably good. What if a couple of cells have broken off and are floating around in your blood? There's nothing that the surgeon can do to catch those except for give you chemotherapy and let the chemotherapy kill those floating cancer cells that are inside your blood. So this is why they're used together. Now, it's also why people that undergo chemotherapy lose their hair and uh, suffer from temperature regulation problems and digestive problems. You also have rapidly dividing um, cells in your fingernails, in your hair, in your stomach lining, and this can result in some pretty nasty side effects as a result of the treatment. Um, so quite often vomiting is a side effect of chemotherapy because your food won't get digested. Um, you might have a little bit of internal bleeding in your mouth because the cheek cells that we scrape off to look at under the microscope, they are rapidly dividing cells and they're getting broken down by the chemotherapy. And of course, you'll lose your hair because those are rapidly dividing cells and you lose them temporarily, not permanently, but temporarily. So summary of cancer cells and stuff that is really important to know. So cancer cells, ones that have stopped responding to those regulatory signals that control cell divisions. A tumour is a mass of abnormal cells, so it's not the first sign of cancer. A tumour is something that you notice after these cancer cells have actually built and joined up together. And then your secondary tumour, so the idea of those original cancer cells breaking off from that tumour, travelling in the blood to a new site and then forming a new tumour in a secondary location. OK, so this slide here, that's your sea level knowledge on what you'd expect to know for this particular topic. So that is the end of key area one. So we've worked you through these. Again, if you're finding them useful, can you let us know? Um, if you find that you didn't like them at all, let us know as well, because it's quite a lot of effort to put them together. And we'd like to know, we'd like to basically expend our effort in the best directions possible. 
um, have a look through your PLP, check the pages of the PLP identified in the assignment, have a go at the PBL tasks, a lot of them are linked to specific cancer problems or specific stem cell treatment things that you might want to have a look at as well. Yep, and if you've got any questions about anything or if you need any help with anything, just email either one of us, you should know which one of us you're supposed to email now. If you're still unsure, it's whoever marked your last homework that you should email. But hopefully this has helped, these videos have helped put a little more insight into the words and we shall be posting the next one in just over a week's time. And make sure you read what is expected of you in the Google Classroom in terms of the tasks that we have assigned you. Okay.